Hello, thank you for joining me today. I'm Jeff Weiss and I'll be talking about TLA plus and using it to prove correctness of a sample problem. My goal is to walk through the epiphanies that I had while watching a video series by Leslie Lamport, who in addition to TLA, TLA plus gave us Paxos and LaTeX. At prior code beams, Hillel Wayne presented why you ought to look at TLA plus and how you might use it. This is not meant as a replacement for that talk or his text, Practical TLA Plus, which I also recommend. His presentation and the book focus more on plus calc, a subset of TLA Plus, which has a more imperative syntax and compiles down to raw TLA Plus. Instead of looking at plus calc, I will focus primarily on raw TLA plus, and here's why. It's simply a state machine. And more than any other language or runtime that I've worked with, state machines are far more prevalent in our ecosystem, formerly with Gen State or with Gen FSM, now with Gen State M slash Gen State Machine. And if you squint, many Gen Server implementations look like state machines. Because state machines are part of our vernacular, it is, much, it is a much smaller transition to represent our problem as a state machine, even if it is not implemented as one. This brings me to a very important point. TLA plus does not test the code or the implementation. It validates the model that you have created against the properties that you have specified. To highlight this, I'm going to take a sample, well-tested package from Hex, build a TLA model for it, prove a handful of properties. Before I propose this talk, I asked Chris Keithley if I could use his circular buffer package for this demonstration, and he kindly agreed. So we'll move forward with it. It's an ideal test case because its interface is relatively small. The constraints can quickly be understood even if one has not previously been exposed to the concept of a circular or ring buffer, which I will use interchangeably. It's easily modeled as a state machine. And most importantly, Chris already did the hard work of figuring out what properties are, what the properties are, and creating property-based tests for his implementation. For an introduction to the goal of a circular or ring buffer, the intent is to have predictable asymptotic memory usage for a list or buffer where only the most recent item items are important. So for instance, some loggers will use a ring buffer on the back end, assuming that only the most recent log entries are the important ones and that the oldest ones can be overwritten if they haven't been able to have been flushed to disk or to IO. And when you add too many items, the older ones are overwritten. Our properties are these. The number of elements is always less than or equal to the starting size. The head element is always the oldest. And eventually, the buffer fills. Fortunately, for highlighting different aspects of TLA+, these properties consist of two classes. Invariance, always less than or equal to the size, always the oldest, and temporal in that eventually it fills up. Let's dive in. In our specification, we declare the initial state function and next state functions. Because this syntax is likely new for folks, I will run through it in more detail what we have here. Our specification has two variables that we will use, size to represent how big the buffer is, and elements, the buffer itself. Our init function is a combination of Boolean expressions. By convention, we start each line with slash backslash for and. Interestingly, we are not stating here that the size is a random value between one and n, but rather all values between one and end. This is a bit of a mental hurdle, and I recommend starting with the mental model of a value between one and n. Elements simply begins its life as an empty sequence. I'll briefly jump to the next function and we'll tackle the constituent parts 
of add full and add not full afterwards. This backslash E nonsense is stating that there exists a value V in our set of model values, which we'll get to in a moment, such that add not full is true or add full is true. And here the backslash slash forming a V means or. If neither of them are true, the model checker will flag in an error that is equivalent to a no function head matching error. Okay, drilling down. What does add not full do? Because this is a state function, it implicitly takes the existing variables of the state diagram, size and elements, and will turn, return new or prime versions of those. We will start with the equivalent of a guard clause. That is, that the size is strictly greater than the number of elements already in our buffer. If that's true, then we say that the elements prime is our original value with the candidate new item appended to it. Afterwards, we're explicitly stating that the size is unchanged by this function because for each variable, we must say what happened to, happens to it during a state transition function. Add full is very similar to add not full, except our guard clause is that the size is equal to the number of elements in the buffer. And rather than simply appending our new item to the elements list or sequence, we append to the tail of that list, dropping the prior head of the list. Here's our implementation along with some pseudo elixir code. I'll pause for a moment for folks to get the idea and do the mental translation. Okay. Now it's time to create our first model and test it against this specification. The model checker automatically picks up our init and next state functions along with the specification of constants in for the largest possible value size and values, the set of placeholders the checker ought to use. The model checker is capable of checking an infinite set of values, but since my talk is limited to around 20 minutes, we don't have, to, we don't have that time and we have to constrain it to a reasonable set. In this case, we assign them labels V1 to V15. These are typeless model values, not unlike any if you've used proper. We also declare that the maximum size is five because we can extrapolate that if these invariants hold for all sizes up to five, they will continue to hold for larger sizes than five as well. We also then add our invariant less than or equal to size. Running the model checker with these values takes about 10 seconds. If we're more patient slash paranoid, we could increase both the maximum size and the set of possible values to test when adding to our circular buffer. We can also lower these values or sets for near instant feedback. Here we see that the model checker explored 13 million states of which 871,000 were distinct. In 10 seconds, the model checker examined 13 million orderings of our values V1 to 15 for buffer sizes up to five, resulting in 871,000 unique orderings and our invariant held for each one. Okay, our first invariant's complete. Let's move to the second. That the element at the head is the oldest. Previously, our specification had no concept of age, so we need to add it. We could have attempted to make elements a sequence of tuples where age is one and the model value is the other, but that's complexity we don't need in this demo. So what we're going to do instead is keep a second sequence of just the ages that we'll operate on in the same way that we do the elements. When we go to add a new element to our ring buffer, we also add a new age of zero and increment the age for all of the existing elements. Increment is a recursive function for a sequence. If we have an empty sequence, we return an empty sequence. If we have at least one item in that sequence, we increment the value at the head and then recursively increment the remainder of the sequence. Once the buffer is full, we discard, discard the age at the beginning of the sequence, just like we do for our buffer elements. 
for our invariant, any sequence of one length is by definition already ordered. For larger sequences, we state that all values i in the length of our sequence, as we progress through our sequence, the ages get progressively smaller. When we run this model with our new invariant, we see that it also passes, though taking a bit more time. Now, for our temporal property, eventually the buffer is full. This is different than an invariant because it is not strictly true at each stage of the state machine, but after at least size elements, it does become true. Intuitively, we can see that yes, the buffer eventually fills, but creating a specification for it is a little less straightforward. Using the two operators, always with square brackets and eventually with angle brackets, we can combine them in two ways, always eventually and eventually always. They are slightly different semantics. Always eventually states that we must get to a full buffer, but it might not stay full at any point after that. Eventually always states that it might take some time, but once we fill, we must stay full. This gives us very rich ways to express our behavior. As an aside, it's possible that some ring buffers would allow you to remove elements and thus we may actually reach the case where the buffer is full at one point and then no longer full in the future. However, fortunately for me as the one specifying this and you as the audience listening to me drone on about this, this implementation simply grows to a fixed size, making it far simpler for, to specify that once it's full, it stays full. We will in fact add both versions of the temporal property to our specification. However, when we first attempt to add it, our model fails. When TLA plus is checking the model, by default it considers a valid next stage of the state machine to be that it stays where it is. Permanently staying at a step is called stuttering. What this error is highlighting is that if we stay at our initial state, oh, sorry, uh, if we stay at our initial state and never add an element, our, even if our initial buffer size is one, that we will never be eventually full. TLA plus has a way for us to nudge processing and say some stuttering is fine, but eventually we need to get some work done. This is referred to as weak fairness as opposed to strong fairness, which is the default. So we add the weak fairness magical incantation to our specification. And we see our model now passes. Awesome. We have a fully specified and check, we have fully specified and check the properties for this package. I'll now do a brief demonstration of it running. So it's not just screenshots and you can see that it does uh, note that for brevity and the amount of time that we'll sit watching the screen, uh, I've reduced the set of model values and the maximum size of the buffer. So here is our full implementation. Uh, it's the same as what, what you saw prior on a slide along with our model. Uh, so that's the results. Spoiler. Uh, so we do have our two invariants and our temporal property and we have our set of model values and our maximal length of four. And when I run this model, it does take a few seconds, even with only up to four elements. Our number of states and distinct states is much smaller because we have a maximal buffer length of four instead of five. Uh, however, we see it does complete uh, and this found 871,000 states uh, of which 58,000 were distinct, but that two invariants held and the temporal property did help for all, hold for all of those as well. If you have further interest in TLA plus, I recommend that you check out these resources. The first is Leslie Lamport's video series that I alluded to earlier. The second is Hillel Wayne's book, Practical TLA plus. Uh, there is, I believe in October, a conference related to TLA plus coming up 
the fourth item here is the Google group for TLA Plus, free to join. And then the last item is uh, Leslie Lamport's original paper around uh, TLA Plus. Thank you for your time. And thanks to Chris for letting me use this package as an example. Uh, if the track host has gathered questions, I can attempt to answer them now. Thank you. Well, we have a question here uh, with a tool like uh, proper or quick check. We are testing our actual code, assuming I model uh, and verify something in TLI plus. How can I check if my actual code uh, follows that model? Yeah, so um, I didn't I didn't talk about this in the talk. The intent of TLA plus is for checking the design and seeing if the design meets what um, what what you want and, and the specific properties. Um, you can, if you want, take the model that you or, and specification that you have in TLA plus and translate it to an analogous model in proper and run your your actual code through there to to test. Um, but but there certainly is no is no cohesion between the two. Um, TLA plus is all around um, testing your design rather than than your specific implementation. Uh, and and I found that it is for me when when I want to do specification in TLA plus it's far faster for me to synthesize the specification and the model within TLA plus than it is to actually write the code. Um, and then write the write the property based tests. Great. Well, another Have I tried else? other tools uh, for model verification? And if yes, uh, could I recommend some? Uh, I have not. Um, sorry. So uh, I, I have some acquaintances um, at uh, Galois here in Portland that that do many uh, various kinds of, of formal verification and some folks at, at Oxon um, who are doing related things for autonomous vehicles um, that, that are looking at TLA plus and a couple other things, um, but, but I have not used them personally. No, sorry. Okay. 